Hello, welcome to the conversation here on New Central Television. This is the program where we bring you all the latest political happenings and updates on the continent. I am Benga Aburua. I am Rita Omodia. It's a bright new week in the month of May and the conversation is right here to bring you top stories making a round in the political arena around the African continent. Now, on the conversation today, we are going to be looking at the political situation in Somalia as a new country now has a new president. And in Kenya, the country counts down to the August 2022 elections. Deputy President William Ruto and Raila Odinga have both picked running mates. I mean, we have yeah. the first uh, female if, running mate for Raila Odinga there. Yes, and if they emerge victorious, she would be the first deputy president okay. uh, that is female. Uh, they, she's popularly known as the Iron Lady. I recall talking to her mm -hmm. uh, nine months ago, and I asked her, I said, uh, what's the future for you politically? And she said, you know, she's interested in, uh, she said at 63, she's still politically wow. young. And she said she's interested in um, in the governorship. And mm. also she might still take a shot at the presidency. Mm. But look at her today. Wow. She's a vice president. She's a deputy president nominee. So nominee. interesting developments. Here. Definitely interesting. Well, we'll see how that pans out. The date for the election is August 9 in Kenya. Meanwhile, we start right here in Somalia, where congratulations are in order and huge celebrations in Mogadishu as Hazan Sheikh Mohammed was elected the new president after a marathon poll involving 36 candidates. Now, the former leader was elected by Somali legislators amid a security lockdown imposed by authorities to prevent deadly rebel attacks. The win was announced after three rounds of voting in which he beat his competitor 214 to 110 votes, making it a repeat of the February 8, 2017 contest, when Mohamud conceded defeat to Farmajo, a newcomer at the time. Now, following the declaration of this win, Mohamed, who served as Somalia's president between 2012 and 2017, was sworn immediately in by the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, Basha Yusuf Ahmed. This a long overdue election is happening against the backdrop of a May 17 deadline by donors like the International Monetary Fund for the Honor of African Nation to put in place a government or lose funding. Now, joining us uh, for this conversation, we have Mustafa Haji Abdenai, who's a journalist and political analyst. He joins in live for Mogadishu, Somalia. We also have Evans Amulili, a Somalia country analyst at WS Insights. He joins in from Nairobi, Kenya. A warm welcome to you both, gentlemen. Thanks for joining us on the conversation. Thank you. I'd like to start with Mustafa. Uh, Mahmoud is widely known uh, for his work as a civic leader and education promoter. What can you tell us about the man, Hassan Sheikh Mohammed, especially during his tenure as president from 2012 to 2017? Hello, Mustafa. The question is directed to you. Can you unmute your mic, please? Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, we can hear you. Now. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, what he said last night when he got to be elected actually says more about uh, what uh, President Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud is. Uh, because uh, he, I mean, he made this tone uh, of uh, conciliatory that uh, he wants uh, uh, nobody to be pursued in, in, in a purpose of, of, of politics. And, and, and many people thought that. Uh, he was just referring to what happened during the past couple of years. So uh, he's a man who wants to reconcile with the uh, politicians. He's a man now to be uh, bringing people together. And he is someone uh, that people believe is a, a man of reconciliation uh, as far as he can. So uh, uh, many people believe that uh, what he has done uh, was not making him to be the best uh, during the past, I mean, uh, yes, he was the president, but still uh, they find him to be uh, someone uh, who can be the ideal person, especially at this time uh, when the country had, I mean, a moment of, uh, a, I mean, uh, a period of, 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 of political crisis and uh, needs uh, a real reconciliation amongst the politicians, uh, the different communities, the member states, 
And uh, also a huge task is ahead, especially uh, in relation to correcting what went wrong uh, during the past uh, uh, five years uh, that President Formaggio was a president, uh, especially uh, in relation to uh, grievances uh, that some politicians have. So uh, he's, he's really uh, someone uh, uh, that people feel is, a, is, is an ideal person uh, that can lead uh, the country uh, toward its prosperity. All right, thank you so much, Mustafa. Over to you now, Evans. Now, if we look at the political arena in Somalia, we know that it has not held a one-person, one-vote election in 50 years. What has been the reason for this? Uh, thank you, Rita, for that question. Uh, once we start to uh, analyze the Somali political landscape, what you can see in terms of uh, Somalia trying to make efforts to achieve a uh, one person, uh, one vote election is that they have been unable to do that due to security concerns and also to a large extent uh, a lack of uh, political will among the Somali political stakeholders. And this is due to the power that uh, the elections, uh, the election process as is at the moment, uh, which it gives to the respective uh, uh, clan elders and it also gives to respective clans. So there has been a lot of uh, resistance uh, from stakeholders in the country to embrace a uh, universal suffrage uh, election. And this we saw in um, February 2020 when uh, president, uh, the, the former president, Famaju, signed uh, a law to allow for a uh, one person, uh, one vote election, but this was not uh, to be as uh, federal member state leaders uh, were opposed to that. And uh, one of the issues they raised is that the country was not uh, secure enough to hold our one person, one vote election. Mm -hmm. And also what we have seen uh, over the years is that it takes uh, a lot of resources and time to put together a one person, uh, one uh, vote election. And this is due uh, to the fact that the government has to put in place uh, to carry out a census, a register voters. However, we have seen um, a few federal member states uh, advance uh, that, uh, that notion in regards to having that universal suffrage election. All right, now still on you, Evans. Now, we saw video clips showing supporters of Hassan Sheikh Mohammed define the curfew <laughs> to the streets of Ogadishu celebrating. Now, uh, Mustafa mentioned that uh, uh, Hazan is a more of a man who is more of a reconciliatory man. Now, can we say that it is a popular choice among the people despite being elected by selected legislators? Um, in Somalia, it's a, a bit difficult to actually uh, uh, highlight or know if a, if a specific candidate is a is uh, popular among the, the populace because um, because the population doesn't directly vote for 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 for, for, for a president. We can also argue that Famaju was uh, fairly uh, fairly popular in uh, in Somalia, but he did not uh, win the election. At the end of the day, it's how the the leaders in Somalia position themselves within uh, within the that uh, electoral system that involves the the members of the upper and lower house. So it doesn't mean if you are popular among the, the population that you automatically have an edge in, uh, in political leadership in Somalia. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Evans. I would like to uh, bring in Mustafa here. The new president struck a conciliatory tone, uh, like you earlier mentioned in your opening statements in his acceptance speech from the airport compound in Mogadishu when he said, we have to move ahead. We do not need grudges, no avenging. He said this uh, with the former president by his side. Does this signal the end to political crisis in Somalia? I think we cannot be uh, bold uh, about saying that this is the end of, of, of the uh, uh, political uh, conflict in Somalia. But uh, what we can uh, simply say is that uh, the new president, of course, who has got re-elected, is also trying to uh, show that uh, he wants to do things differently uh, because he also wanted to show that uh, he has learned from what happened, especially during the past couple of, 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 of uh, years. Uh, and uh, with the challenges ahead, including security and, and, and about the uh, election itself, 
uh, uh, which was of a problem for the uh, uh, his, I mean, predecessor. Uh, 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 he also wants to, uh, to do a lot uh, and, 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 and show his uh, uh, capability of, of, of doing things different than the previous leader uh, in, in, in facing all these challenges. So uh, what he can do may be little, but uh, what he can show to say, uh, as, as, as I mean politicians do, is that uh, he wants to do everything with, with, within his powers. Even though we know that uh, what he can do, I mean, in practical terms, uh, can be, uh, uh, I mean, very little, uh, just like every other president, because uh, President Formaggio has done a lot. Uh, if you look at uh, where he started, and uh, still uh, the challenge has persisted. He tried hard uh, to bring about an election of one person and one vote, uh, which many people thought was, I mean, the main, I mean, uh, run for, 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 for his uh, uh, political agenda. Uh, he could never win uh, that, and still people see that. That also uh, can be a thing in the future. And uh, not only that, but also uh, we have a draft constitution, uh, which needs to be also uh, uh, completed. Uh, and uh, the country also has got no, I mean, the uh, Supreme Court, that needs to be established. All these things, I mean, uh, are challenges uh, which make a huge task, which also uh, uh, President Formaggio has mentioned. Uh, but of course, uh, the little time he has and, and the huge task that's ahead uh, can, is, is incomparable and, 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 and striking a balance between doing a lot uh, in, a, in a short period of time is a challenge that every leader is facing. So uh, uh, President Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud becoming uh, the first leader to become, I mean, president for the second time, uh, he also, I mean, needs to show that uh, he, he can do a lot. But but uh, let's see, let's see. Time tells everything. All right, thank you, Mustafa. There are a lot of expectations uh, for Hazan Sheikh Mahmoud. But right now, Evans, uh, let's start with one of the major issues that has been bothering a lot of Somali people, which is the issue of security. Now, Somalia has been besieged by an increasing number of attacks from the Al-Qaeda-linked Al-Shabaab group, who now uh, supposedly collect taxes, decide court cases, and control the streets. Does the new president have the willpower to control this? Uh, thank you for that, Rita. Uh, once we look into how the Somali uh, security landscape has been for the past four years, we have seen that uh, uh, President Mahmoud comes into a space that has seen uh, the federal government uh, invest a lot of resources and uh, even formulate a lot of policies targeted towards uh, improving the security in Somalia. Uh, as as Mahamud takes over, one of the key things that he has to navigate in terms of policy is uh, the African Union transition mission in Somalia and its current mandate and how long uh, they'll be in Somalia and if they will be able uh, at the end of the day to hand over security responsibilities to, to the Somali security forces. This is something that uh, his pre predecessor had uh, insisted on, on having uh, the Somali security forces take up that, uh, that responsibility. But it's still uh, early to say if uh, that policy is going to change for Mahamud or is going to continue pushing in that direction to try and make sure that Mali security forces are enabled and equipped in terms of uh, training, uh, equipment, and, um, and, other and other facilities that they need to be able to deliver on their, on their said mandate. But so far, uh, from the track record, um, that Mahmoud has uh, from his previous term is that uh, with the with the uh, with the necessary support and with the key support that he will get from uh, various uh, security partners, he will be able to deliver on that and see and uh, just limit and reduce the capability of of Al Shabab. However, once we look at um, at uh, the posture that has been uh, displayed by Mahmoud before, is that he's uh, of the opinion that. Um, conventional uh, means of trying to resolve uh, the Al-Shabaab uh, issue are not as viable as people think. And uh, people need to think outside the box if they are to, to end the Al-Shabaab uh, problem in Somalia, which I believe is something he'll continue to, to, to pursue uh, in, his, uh, in his second term. Uh, Evers. Mustafa, um, we've seen the African uh, Union mission, uh, AMISOM, transform into ACMIS, the African 
uh, Union Transmission Mission in Somalia, which has a two-year mandate to complete its mission. How critical is Somalia's stability in the region? And do you see Kenyan troops uh, withdrawing uh, from Somalia in the next uh, few years as the country uh, begins a new path towards uh, lasting security? Uh, in fact, uh, I can say it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's very difficult to say that uh, 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 very soon the Somali National Army can take over uh, the uh, Artemis forces because of the uh, I mean, situation on the ground. And uh, this is mainly about the capability of the uh, Somali National Army and uh, 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 their own I mean, uh, 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 ability to take over. Uh, because, uh, of course, it's one of the things that uh, President Formaggio uh, takes pride in, in the reformation of the army and uh, uh, its structures. Uh, uh, at least now uh, they have formalized a lot about the national army and they are in a position uh, uh, to continue with that, uh, to get them to uh, I mean, a level where they can take over the power. But at the moment, uh, frankly speaking, uh, I don't see, I mean, uh, a situation uh, that makes possible in the, uh, in the in the short time to come uh, for the Somali uh, National Army to take over Artemis. Uh, but of course, uh, uh, as long as the uh, African Union forces in Somalia are now a transitional force, uh, which is, I mean, a different mandate compared to the previous mandate, which uh, has been there for like uh, 40 years and, 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 and more, uh, and, and did little to, to, to I mean, liberate Al Shabaab from Somalia. I think people are now uh, thinking, uh, having a, a different mandate, uh, which makes sense for the Somali people and, and for the Somali National Army specifically. And they feel that a lot will be placed uh, in the efforts to improve the Somali army's ability to take over the security because of this mandate, which is uh, which, which which indicates that the African Union forces are transitional force. All right. Now, while hands on deck to curb this insecurity situation, Evans, the United Nations has warned of a humanitarian catastrophe amid a devastating drought that threatens to drive millions into famine, just like it did in 2011. Now, how bad was it then and how can it be curbed? Um, once we look at the situation, uh, according to Somali uh, authorities, is that the situation is dire and is similar to what uh, is almost similar to what had been recorded uh, in uh, in 2011. However, we have seen efforts by the uh, by the former is going to be soon the former Prime Minister um, Mohammed Abdullahi uh, uh, Hussein Roble make efforts to to appeal for more uh, humanitarian assistance into into Somalia. However, we also need to take into consideration that. Um, once we have uh, increased uh, uh, need for humanitarian access, that also exposes uh, humanitarian actors and they aid itself to Al Shabab. Um, to Al Shabab, and in several instances, we have seen uh, Al Shabab uh, uh, actually uh, blockade some regions. Uh, for instance, uh, the southwest region, uh, southwest state, um, uh, southwest state. Uh, that's the region of uh, Bakol, is specifically in, in Hudur. Uh, humanitarian actors have for a very long time been unable to reach these populations and this is due to a, a, a blockade imposed by Al-Shabaab and um, if uh, such uh, situations are not able to be resolved we'll continue to see the situation deteriorate but so far what we have seen from the international community and, um, and, others, and other partners in Somalia is that their response is, is positive and they have continued to send a lot of, uh, of aid and assistance uh, to Somalia just to alleviate the situation. Thank you, Evans. Uh, now, Mustafa, we've seen a situation where uh, Al-Shabaab basically has a, strong, uh, a stranglehold over everything in um, Somalia, uh, peace, humanitarian aid, uh, and so many other things. Uh, we've seen a situation where they've tried a uh, the United Nations uh, mission in Somalia, they've tried Amazon, and uh, Al-Shabaab seems to be growing from strength to strength. Uh, we do know that you can't shoot your way out of a conflict, and you might still have to get uh, to the diplomatic table and drawing board to discuss. Is the new president uh, willing to 
look at other means of resolving this conflict with al-Shabaab or negotiating with them is uh, it, it's impossible. Uh, the conversation about uh, if uh, a conventional way of, of fighting a force like al-Shabaab is, 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 is possible anymore. Uh, uh, and, and many people think that maybe if someone negotiated with them, it could be okay. Uh, but for the fact that al-Shabaab is not like a, a, a conventional, I mean, uh, guerrilla uh, organization itself, uh, makes it difficult for them to accept a negotiation. Al-Shabaab wants to impose uh, Islamic Sharia uh, uh, in Somalia and in the region, uh, of course, as they say, uh, and, 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 and that it makes, uh, that, uh, I mean, idea itself is uh, what makes it difficult uh, to kick a, a, a negotiation. Uh, even though some people say that uh, something uh, like what happened in Afghanistan can also be possible in Somalia, and the government can talk to uh, Al-Shabaab and discuss about vow sharing and all this stuff. Uh, but, uh, you know, Al-Shabaab is not like uh, a Somali I mean, uh, organization only. Uh, they say that uh, some of the top guys of Al-Shabaab included uh, foreigners, uh, and, and, and they are linked with Al-Qaeda. So all this, I mean, uh, uh, mixed uh, of ideas also uh, make difficult. But for the uh, new president, uh, I think there was a time that uh, uh, he has also been questioned about this. Um, and, and, and even though all the leaders were not open about, uh, I mean, a discussion with Al-Shabaab, uh, they, they have shown that the government is always flexible uh, uh, to do everything possible uh, uh, to bring down, I mean, this conflict that has been there for, for a long time and to negotiate with any entity that wants to have, I mean, uh, a stake in the power and stop violence. So, of course, it is possible if, 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 if it's... Uh, uh, a feasible idea uh, for the president to say we are open to negotiate with our Shabbat. Now, Evans, while we're looking at the way forward to Somalia, since we're seeing an election which was long overdue we know that telecommunications is a major industry in somalia now with this election do we hope to see more investors entrepreneurs businesses being attracted to somalia and of course uh, bring about a better growth economic growth in somalia um i believe uh, once we reflect uh, even just uh, for the better part of uh, uh, even the former president's tenure is that we saw uh, the international community be more uh, more uh, dependable or more uh, affirmed and assured of how uh, the security landscape and the, the political landscape in, in Somalia. So when we look at uh, Mahmoud, if he builds uh, on that uh, on that uh, foundation that has been left behind, I believe he should be able to attract more investment in, into the country, uh, specifically during his tenure. However, we will have to wait for some time and just see uh, the, the policy leanings that uh, Mahmoud and his administration are going to take, are they going to be more keen on um, advancing their, their, regional, uh, their regional foreign policy, or are they going to approach uh, uh, Gulf states and their partners uh, out of the country to, to try and get this uh, these investment into Somalia? But so far, what we have seen is that uh, assurance from uh, the international community that they are willing to even set up their their embassies uh, in Mogadishu. If we look um, in the past uh, three years, we have seen uh, several embassies actually reopen their offices in, uh, in in Mogadishu, and this is a testament to just how much confidence they have at the moment with their security landscape in that country. And this is due to the gains that were made uh, during Mahmoud's first uh, tenure and even uh, Mahmoud's tenure, and they expect. Um, uh, looking forward that he will be able to safeguard those uh, those gains and even attract uh, more investment in the, into the country uh, during his tenure. All right, thank you so much, Evans. And of course, thank you so much, Mustafa Abdinur, for joining us on the conversation, looking at the visions of the new president, Hazan Sheikh Mohammed. Thank you for joining us on the conversation. Thank, thank you. you for having me. Thank you for having us. Right now, we'll go on a quick break, and when we come back, we're looking at the political situation in Kenya, where the candidates for the presidents have actually nominated, or rather peaked, their deputies. We'll be right back. Just stay tuned.